my friend. It was really good to see you. I'm so happy to hear about the news that you were able to get the transplant. It's like a real story. I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to putting this down. And we've been talking about it for a long time. And I'm so happy. You don't know how happy you made me by coming into my life the other day, having gone through all that. And I think people are going to find it really interesting. And welcome, welcome very much to Conversations, where it's a pleasure, a personal pleasure to welcome to the program a dear friend of myself for a long time, uh, that being Jeffrey Feller. And Jeffrey Feller is a, well, he's a poet. He's a social worker. He's also a poet, and people who are familiar with the New Yorican uh, Poets Cafe will recognize Jeff. He's an oftentimes a, the, the host at the poetry reading events down there, including the slams and so forth. And uh, he's an all-around good fellow. He's going to read some poetry to us and so forth. He's a wannabe and perhaps aspiring to be actor, and uh, perhaps more relevant to a good deal of what we're going to talk about today than all of that uh, past and future is that he's a recent recipient. We're taping now on June 22nd of the year 2005, and within the last three months or so, Jeffrey has been a recipient of a donor liver that was donated to him, uh, keeping him from, he was close to, if I may think, death door in that status of people, so many of them in the country that are in need of a, uh, an organ, and he was the recipient of that. He's coming around, he's gonna share all of that with us, and Jeffrey, Welcome very, very much to Conversations. I feel like I'm talking to Lazarus. Oh, I don't know about all that, but yeah. thank you very much for inviting me to be here. And I'm um, really happy to be here. I'm happy to be anywhere. Yes, but, uh, yes. Three months ago. Considering the alternative, March yeah. March 10th and 11th are my new birthdays. Uh huh. I was on the waiting list for a liver transplant for five years and ten months, maybe nine months and three weeks, you know. Uh -huh. It's a pretty long time. And at the end of... Uh, that span, I was in and out of the hospital for about four months. Uh huh. Then, as the liver deteriorated, yeah, it was getting was to it? the yeah. point where I was getting yeah. encephalopathic every other week. Encephalopathic, encephalopathic is means like a coma the, state. Well, I get to the point where I was in a coma, and I was found three times at the at where I live. And if I may, you were found by people almost by happenstance. You were in a coma-like state that had you not been found. I'd have you died, might yeah. have perished. Yeah, and I'd have by died. accident, serendipity. By or chance. I wouldn't chance. say accident, but by chance. I had by a chance. homemaker come in on me one time. Another uh -huh. time, a social worker that was um, part of the uh, pro part of a program that oversaw yeah. people with poor health. Uh -huh. And then the third time, I had that life alert, and uh -huh. uh, they would check on me twice a day, and uh -huh. I didn't respond. They would send an ambulance, and uh -huh. I was found and uh, brought to the hospital. Didn't even wake up until I was already in the room. Uh -huh. I figure you usually spend about five, six hours in the ER, so I was pretty out of it. Yeah. Finally, I um, had been transferred from the hospital in Jersey to Mount Sinai, which was the hospital where I had been followed for my liver disease, uh -huh. and they did a paracentesis. That's a process where they put a needle and they take some of the fluid from a person's tummy. Uh -huh. They found out from that the it was stomach or from, from the tummy, yeah, stomach. And they take the fluid out of the stomach and they find out uh, that it was um, infected, uh -huh. and they treated me with antibiotics um, intravenously. Uh -huh. Within 12 days, I was out of the hospital and finally better, but still sick and deteriorating so that they have a rating system where, you know, anywhere from like a low score to a 35 and up, it's called a MELD score. Uh -huh. And depending on, and it's based this on blood work. This is for people who have who a, need a liver, no, who need a liver let transplant. Me, let me walk you through a little bit. This is your really, your problem was a liver related right. problem. I there are other problems, there's kidney and other things, but there's the liver problem. And you had a problem in terms of having uh, encountered, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just go through the whole ball of weight because it's important now. Uh, hepatitis C. Right. right, I had hepatitis and C. And you don't know where that came from. It could have come from hepatitis shaving. Hepatitis C, but I it's could have been borrowing razors when I worked in the resort hotels. Yeah. And borrowing razors when I was a kid, yeah. 16, 17 years old. Uh -huh. Hey, you know, I'm going to work lunch. Let me borrow your razor, you know. and Happens all the time. In the Army, it happens just routinely. Yeah, I remember. And then yeah. uh, that was like, back then they called it 9A, 9B. I uh, donated blood in 1983. Yeah. In 86, when I had a job, they... I mentioned that they had sent me a letter saying that when the donated blood, I might have hepatitis. So they checked it. They found it was true. All right. But it could have happened from that. It could have happened from a tattoo. 
It can happen to those people who use intravenous drugs. You don't have a drugs. tattoo, do you? Yes, I do. I you have do. a yellow-breasted red bird, just what I really needed in you life. You have a yellow-breasted ta red, red, red bird tattoo? On my right arm, just what right I really arm. needed in life. Do you life. remember when you got that? I yeah, mean, around 1979, Were you sober? Uh, yeah. Okay, right, right. Red, red, Yellow-breasted mm, red. I might have smoked a bone, uh, well, but anyway. Uh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Just the same... Uh, Anyway, it could come from that. It can come from a number of different things, and so forth. Sometimes and, people never know. It could and also this come hepatitis from business is worth talking about because hepatitis C is really growing in the population. And Second to a, HIV is a uh, rapidly growing uh, health is, problem in yeah. the country. Any connection between the two? No, um, not, not the way not it's transmitted. Or well, transmitted, a, and it's blood. blood. To blood. Yeah, uh -huh. For example, it would be surprising to most people, especially to me, but. I've, because I've asked a hundred times, uh -huh. it's not. It's not done from uh, intercourse. Uh huh. You'd have to have like really. Um, it has to be blood to blood. Uh huh. You know, one would think you know you have relations. You're yeah. going to. Um, yeah. I've asked countless amount of doctors. You mean and talk, no you're talking evidence. hepatitis C now? Right. There's so it's blood to blood. Right. A razor. Or so something. in other words, if yeah. I, I could have intimacy with somebody, yeah. and I am not going to infect that person uh -huh. unless we're having some seriously rough. Relations that cause yeah. each of us to become blood, blood brother and sister, yeah, or right, know, all right, and, just and that, the same. Um, so you don't know where that came from, but it was a problem, and it got worse, and then that had an effect upon your liver functioning, right? More important yeah. than how it happened is the fact that, except that you know, anyone who's uh, listening should and watching the show should know about being healthy and, and taking precautions. And yeah, being, and know, societally careful. we should be aware of it because it's such a growing uh, incidence of it in the there are others. There's three or four different types of hepatitis, right? All of which are problem, but hep Hepatitis C is the worst, or what? Well, or there are, there's hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C. I can right. I can refer to you about hepatitis C. Right. And hepatitis C, there's a, about 20% of the people with hepatitis C will have a disease their liver to cirrhosis, and 20% of the people who get cirrhosis are going to need a transplant. Uh -huh. That's how it was broken down to me. So I really had to be one of those quote unquote lucky, not lucky people. Uh -huh to go through that hoop and then to another hoop to the point where I needed a transplant. Uh -huh. Hepatitis C never goes away, uh -huh. so that even though I'm healthy right now, and thank goodness, and I feel yes. great, and it's been a pleasure. It was so good to see you walk through my door the other day, all healthy, and you had been in all kinds of bad shape, and it was just one of the happiest things that's happened to me in a decade or two. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, yeah, I, I mean was it. Fried. Yeah. Yeah. I was fried Yeah, for you a were in time. bad shape, I know. I remember I tried to call in the hospital one time you were there, and I couldn't get through. It was confusing and everything. And Anyway, go ahead. If I'm sorry. That Ron White I'm waxing because friend. you're an old friend. Yeah, he right. was helpful, you know. Uh huh. Uh -huh. He was the one person to call me a lot while I was in the hospital. Who is several that? Times. Ron Whiter. Ron Whiter's a great poet. Yeah. I mean, he is really New a Paul's good. Poet, yeah, New Paul's good man, poet. A lot of poet. good things. Friends with Mikhail Horowitz and the other uh, Andy Claus and a lot of those poets uptown, upstate, and everything sure. like that. Sure. To get a good word in for the poets, gosh knows we had to get good words in for the poets. And you have been involved with the poets, see, you are a poet. Right, You're going to read true. a couple pieces for us, I know. Yeah. But and then also you guest host or you host the uh, slams I host and things at that. Sometimes the New Eureka Poets. Yeah, Cafe, people know you down there, Lois East and all. Third that. between B and C. Yeah, a major Yellow cultural Green, institution. And I'm happy to say that poetry is alive and well in this country. Oh yeah, there's which a lot is of really good poets there. One of the most encouraging. We did with Felice. Police Bell, Bell and, and Claire uh, Altima. And Claire Altima. We did a program with them. We talked to Lois. We went there one time to see Rich Rizzi. Right. Poet we know and everything. He called me. He said he's going to be reading. And I went down there. I've been going to poetry readings for nine to 50 years. And it's always five or six literary type people there at the poetry reading, you know. And I went in there with 350 people. They were climbing up the walls. I mean, they were hanging from the, the walls. That staircase on the yeah, corner near the it stage. it was great. It was just great. And they have these slams where they judge it like the Olympics. And they have teams and they compete. I've, 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 only, I've only hosted a slam once on uh -huh. a Friday night. Uh -huh. And that was a lot of fun. I've uh, hosted the Late Show for about four years. The after is that the an slam, open mic thing? Or that's what? an open mic. Yeah, Everyone yeah. gets to read one poem. One poem. Try yeah. to make it about three minutes unless they're changing the world and saving our lives. You know, it's okay, three minutes. Go four if you're saving you know, if the you're, world. If you're doing great, you can even Maybe have four five. Maybe four and a half. Yeah, five. You know? right, right, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you know, everyone gets a chance to have the opportunity to read. Yeah, it's really great. And then we decided, you know, after a long time, to do once a month on the first Sunday of the month, an open room on the afternoon. Yeah. So it's uh, poetry uh, for a Sunday afternoon. It comes usually the first Sunday of the month. Probably going to start that up again in the fall. At the New Yorican. At the New Yorican. Yeah, it's a great institution. And it's so, I'm so happy that poetry is alive and well. And uh -huh. Lois, she runs it, or she's down there. 
She said it had to do with the uh, slam. That apparently is very successful. The slam is very where they may, It's like the Olympics. I think it's really funny. Mm -hmm. The Olympics of poetry. We think that poem or that performance piece is a 6.7, or we think this one's an 8.3, like in the Olympics, and then, and then there's a winner. The and winners. then they have a World Series of Poetry, which I was just really knocked there's out that there's such a thing. There's a national poetry competition. Yeah, yeah, and it's very Every year it, it moves from city to city. Right. And there are poetry cafes and clubs from all over the world that compete. I know, I and think it's great. people go on and they wind up having a career like, a lot of the poets from the New Yorican have wound up on Russell Simmons' Deaf Poetry, mm -hmm. and a few of those in, people, including Steve, uh, in my old age, the memory. But you don't Steve know Coleman, from old age Steve yet, Coleman young is man. One I'm telling you, it's all downhill from where you is. Who was in the uh, Broadway show um, yeah. Yeah. that uh, Russell Simmons produced, yeah. uh, Deaf Poetry, uh, yeah. at, uh, on Broadway. Mm -hmm. That said, there's like I've seen a lot of people, and they, you can get work. You go into a college, you make a thousand dollars, read you know forty minutes worth of poetry, mm. get flown in to do it. Not you mean bad. You, you're going to be able to make your way with Some poetry in this world? Living, Isn't that amazing? Can people you imagine can make people making poet. their way with art in a society? It'd be grand if everybody could make their way with art. Except the Balinese have a saying: "We have no art. We do everything as well as possible." That's and also, it, but it's encouraging the written word or the wrote word and the spoken word now is really encouraging. And Lois said it was the slam and the idea it's like a World Series. So they have New York has a team and Boston has a team and Portland and they get together like the World Series. And they're all socially relevant and really good wordsmiths and so forth. And it's performance really in a sense. But then she said the other thing, you know, she contributed this popular poetry is uh, hip hop. There's a tie-in to the hip-hop phenomena because hip-hop is poetic and that there's a tie-in in terms of the interest among the young in poetry. It was the most encouraging thing I'd seen in a couple yeah, decades that poetry is alive and well. My friend Rocky produces once uh, the first Wednesday of the month. Uh -huh. uh, hip-hop and all that, it's mm. on the first Wednesday at 9.30 at the New York Poets uh -huh. Cafe. Uh -huh. So the first Wednesdays. And you've been there. You've been there. And in fact, I don't know if we have it. Maybe we have a we have a little piece that we have. Uh, I think we got to set up in the in the a, a little clip the, of uh, you being a uh, host of the Late Show. The, the host room. of the Late Show at the New York Rake, and it sh it'll show people who are not know familiar. Where is this down on? I forget. I've been there. Thirty East Third between East B and C. That's it. Down on the Lower East Side, where all the action be as far as the arts and so forth. So maybe we could set up that little piece. It only runs a few seconds or 30 seconds or so, you introducing people. And we're talking with Jeff Feller, and we'll show a little piece of the New York and for those who aren't familiar with it, because that's a scene which he dwelled in a great deal of his time, and we'll be doing so again. So run that now, please. Did we have a beautiful feature? Was that feature? Did you feel that? I'm good, thank you. Oh man, if you feel it anymore, I'm gonna go rock a bye. Oh, and come back, come on now. I said, let it go to shit, let it get shit. Come on now. Yeah. Hello. Okay, everybody died, they just don't have the energy to call a cab, huh? Yeah. All right, you know, like, you know, drink some coffee and tea. Give Pepe some money, you know, he likes to be tipped, you know. Now, did anybody enjoy anything they heard tonight? Yeah. My goodness gracious, <laughs> this is sad. And police makes it look easy, but I'll tell you what, getting up there and hosting week after week. Police bell, Very easily, uh, she doesn't like what we like on anyway. You know, looks easy. Now, here we go. Without any further ado, my name is Jeffrey. Welcome to the open room. Thank you very much. Now, we've had different ways of letting everybody know what happens here. Now, what we do is everyone who wants to signs up, they get to read one poem. One poem. One, oh no, one poem. Now, if you really want to read two, you know, this is part one and this is part two of the same poem. You know, in fact, if you started with War and Peace and ended up with Love of Man and Woman, which is almost 
same thing anyway, that's all good, you know. But like, try to keep it to one, and also, try to keep it to three minutes. I mean, if you're really cooking and you're changing our life and we're stealing, you have a good time, get off. But if you start talking about, well, I woke up, you know, uh, looked for a job, uh, got stressed, and it was easy to find a job with clothes on, you know. Uh, then that's, you know, going to make us cry, and we're going to want to, you know, like, throw eggs at you. So, that said, now, we've had different ways of letting you know, but if you see the hand go up, that means you're three minutes or something, it's time to wave bye-bye, thank you very much. You know? Now, our first poet is going to be... We should hear it. Jana. Oh, okay, so that's you, that's the thing, and that's a little piece of what you did a lot of. You spent a lot of time down right, there. Right, I bring like uh, yeah. sometimes a green um, hand, which would, if I put it up, it was like, green usually means go. Uh -huh. If I put it up, it means go, sit down. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, that would be the person had, you know, done their three minutes or they thought they had the world-saving poem, and maybe it was time that that world-saving poem got some rest. You don't have a hook like they did in va vaudeville days, right? Where no, they would pull the person off the stage? No, but we also used to have my friend, the purple bastard. He, he was, was like a, a big guy that doll. would, big guy, I take it? i pull his arm, his yeah. arm, you know. Uh -huh. If I pull his arm, he couldn't applaud. Uh-huh, uh -huh. You know, pull his right hand. Uh-huh. Can't applaud because, you know, he can't give you a hand. He doesn't yeah. have one. Uh -huh. If I pulled his leg, he was leaning toward leaving, you know, uh -huh. falling, and you yeah. should be leaning toward leaving. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pulled his head, we couldn't even hear you, so yeah. it was time to leave. I see. You get the, you know, word, so you get the word across. Different yeah. cues, you know, it's and a, a great nice way to let people know that, you know, but it's good to <coughs> let people, because, you know, <coughs> the poem doesn't really become alive until yeah. it's been read in public. All right, that's good. Now, listen, I want to talk a little bit more about this thing, because you you, you went through this thing. Uh, we were talking about the uh, hepatitis C that led to your liver condition. And I would, let's talk a little bit more about that because sure, I know you've done do some that. poems that came off that and everything. But you, so you had these uh, epilep, what do you call them? Uh, encephalopathic comas. Now you've gone you through that a number of times. And then the procedure by which, and it became known that you were in a situation where you were going to either need a liver transplant or you were going to perish. I was going to die, right. You were going to die. And that was in a certain sense. What is that procedure? How many people are in that? Let's just say for the liver. We want to talk about other things too. I would but say how many people are in that I situation? What is the situation as far picture, as the societal as don donor base of organs that can be done to give other people life? We want to let people know about that. In the end, we're going to give information. So let me tell you, but let me get fill us in on that. This, like, yeah. Every year, there's an organization called TRIO, which is a transplant okay. recipient organization. Let me hold it up. Maybe you can show it. Uh -huh. And uh, there's a woman, a wonderful young uh, woman named Lorraine De Pasquale, who's president of TRIO. Mm -hmm. And that is made up of people who are either waiting for an organ or have already received a transplant, either uh -huh. a kidney, a liver, uh -huh. heart, lungs. It relates to all of them. How many, how many organs are that are transplantable? You, a person donating their organs can help as many as 14 people. There's corneas, there's lymph nodes, there's lungs, kidneys, heart, heart, yeah, the liver. liver, pancreas, all these can be transplanted. I think I said cornea. You did, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's as many marrow, as 14, blood, uh, blood, uh, blood, yeah, bone marrow, marrow. Bone marrow, yeah. Bone marrow can be done from people who are alive as well as you can have a live organ donor. Uh-huh. Uh, for the liver yeah. and the kidney. And the kidney. Because what they'll do with a person is if the, everything is quite right with the blood type and mm -hmm. the size, mm -hmm. they can take a percentage of a person's liver yeah. because it's the only organ It'll that re will regenerate. It will regenerate. And yeah. they will take a part of a, it's, you know, the liver uh -huh. and transplant it into another person. Mm -hmm. And within a couple of months, it'll grow to the same size. The, um, Physiologically, oh. instead of having like three leaves, like uh -huh. if you looked at a leaf, there'd be like three veins. Yeah. It'll have two veins, but it'll do the same work. Uh -huh. And that'll be the same for the person. In fact, the person who donates will probably have a more of a hard time, but within two, three months, that person will be able to resume work. Uh-huh, that's interesting, yeah. the person who donates. Otherwise, I had a friend who offered to do yeah. that, my friend Carol Sloan. Yeah, However, in your um, case, yeah. Her, in her case, her, everything was the f fine tooth perfect except her size of her liver was not large enough. I tried to talk her out of it, uh -huh. actually. I mean, it's not exactly the type of thing that uh, 
oh, how are you doing today? Um, yeah, is that liver all yours or can yeah. I have some? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that, but um, it, it is something to consider, like a loved one in a family or something. I, I, I had a friend of mine whose sister donated to him a kidney that he was going to die. And George everything. Lopez, the famous comedian, yeah. and, and, uh, who has a TV show on ABC, just yeah. recently got it from it, his wife, which was interesting because they're not even, technically that wasn't supposed to be the same... Uh, Right. That was just good luck. Now, if you're in a thing where you've got something that can't be, like a liver that regenerates, other things don't, uh, what they can do is they can harvest, as it would be, uh, organs Divers from people organ. who pass or die, and there is a movement by which you can let the authorities know, or set up a system by which if you, you want to let, back let me finish. Let, you can you can sign up to have your do, your your organs donated if you are to die in an accident or something like that. And this is something that for a lot of people could be very well considered as a way of contributing societally to the benefit of others. And if I'm not mistaken, you said something on the order of 7,000 people in this country pass or perish because they don't have a liver in the specific case. And is, is that not something that more people should be aware of, this liver, this organ donor and transplantation systems that exist within our society? This is true. Uh, uh -huh. As I recall, every year, the Transplant Recipient International Organization, TRIO, mm -hmm. has a day and it's a celebration of those heroes who have donated their loved one's organs so that other people could live. Or signed up to have theirs them. donated? We, ce that? we celebrate the people who's, who's lost the loved one because the people who've, who've given their organs are not here to celebrate. They've passed on. Wait a minute. If somebody is... Could you let me explain? Okay, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Tri Trio has an, uh, an event uh -huh. at St. Patrick's Cathedral. We celebrate the families who have allowed their loved one's organs to be harvested so that others can live. Let's say your sister died and she wanted her liver to be donate, uh, available to someone else. And it made that would, clear in the middle, that right. she wanted that. She That's what the, the point her, I was getting at. She yeah. signs the back of her license. She also signs up and registers with the National Registry for Organ Donation. Uh -huh. That done, when the time comes, the family is going to be involved and say, yes, we would like these organs to be available to people if they could use them. Mm. Now, you have to think, someone who you love has just died, mm -hmm. and you're allowing somebody else to, to access... To cut up that body like Frankenstein. To access, yeah. I wouldn't put it well, that way. Well, no, but I mean, people because, might. Excuse you know. me, you know, yeah, yeah. let me just... Because if you want yeah. to paint it ugly, that's no sense. Yeah, yeah. But no, just, I'm not at all painting it ugly. I think it's a marvelous... When you talk a about Frankenstein... Well, then. I know people will take that view, you know. I mean, the thing no, is, some people well, will. Well, why have we not... Why do we not have more people signing up as donors and family members ready to take that course if it isn't based on well, some it, sort of a well, superstitious idea well, like Frankenstein or something. Could you imagine uh, why you wouldn't want to do that? I can't, uh, no. Okay. Yeah. Well, some people just want their family to be left the way they are. Right. And some people would, that's a feeling. Most, uh, in fact, everywhere except Japan, organ donation is accepted in all religions, with the exception, as I am understanding it, in Japan, although that's changing, yeah. they do not believe that life ever ends. Uh -huh. Therefore, you cannot take an organ from someone because even though the person is not in a physical uh, physical sense uh -huh. alive, as we would know it, uh -huh. they don't believe that there's a thing as physical death. That's what I've been told. That's so other than, the, other than the culture of Japanese people, uh -huh. which again, I don't know how widespread that is because yeah. it may not even include a majority of the population, yeah. just the same in every religion. Those who wish to leave their organs to others, mm -hmm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. Now that said, there is, as I was explained by, I think it was the Deputy um, Surgeon General from mm -hmm. uh, the United States, mm -hmm. really wonderful man, he came up and he had spoken about organ donation. His uh. wife and his daughter had died in an accident yeah. and he allowed their organs to be harvested for others to live. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a really painful experience to know that you've lost your wife, your daughter. Yeah. I don't know how he has the wherewithal to even function afterward. Just the same. He spoke that picture a baseball field or a football field about, you know, and you have a big arena, 56,000 people. Yes. That's how many people in the country, and maybe it's even 70,000 that are waiting for an organ. Mm -hmm. And as I remember, and it could be actually a higher amount, 7,000 people each year will fall off that list and die. And it, more people will come onto that list. 
Uh -huh. And I was very fortunate yeah. because I was followed. In, technically, my MELD score, they have a whole thing called MELD the MELD score. score. Yeah. It's based on the blood work. Uh -huh. And technically, I was not a high enough MELD score, which is the present way they decide how people would get a transplant in the organ. That, is that based on how close to morbidity you are? Yeah, well, uh -huh. usually when uh -huh. your blood work is really uh -huh. high yeah. and you're in a 30-something and 34, and th you're imminent, your death is imminent. Uh -huh. And so if you don't have, if, so if the organ is not available, people like even Walter Payton, the famous football player, uh -huh. died waiting for a liver transplant. Uh -huh. I was uh -huh. really lucky. My MELD score was only 21. As However, opposed to? As opposed to 34. Technically, 21, 34, that's four, technically yeah. I was lucky to get this liver. However, here's the way it worked. The yeah. uh, government monitors very closely. Mm -hmm. The hospital that had been working with me, Mount Sinai, and thanks to Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Schiano. Sure, let them all know, yeah. You know, um, and, the, and the wonderful staff at Mount Sinai Hospital yeah. in New York here, mm -hmm. I was able to get my liver. What they did is they had allowed me to sign something that said I was willing to take a free liver, if I can remember the terminology. What Free? that meant is that yeah. there are some livers that other plant, uh, transplant in centers will turn down, mm -hmm. either because it's been exposed to hepatitis A or B or C, exposed, which is different than acti having it active in the body, uh -huh. or there'll be an organ that is like where they would give 60% and 40%, mm -hmm. or they use 10% for the, a child and they had 90%. Or there was just something wrong with the liver that one place didn't like it, and they, it would be then available in an open pool, and it was what you'd call a free liver. Mm -hmm. So even though, you see, now, one, there were so many things wrong with me other than my blood mm -hmm. that I wouldn't have made it to a number 30 or a 34 or a higher number to you be might transplanted. Have died. I, not might have, I would have. You would have died. So yeah. they were able to get the government to agree. They appealed that the government should allow me to get a transplant. Mm -hmm. And there was a liver available. I had gone to the hospital in and out for like from December to March. So with these coma things you got in? The encephalopathic right? comas. Twice, mm. once a social worker uh -huh. from CCPED had come in on me, this woman, Panna, mm -hmm. a nice woman. Another time it was a um, homemaker because mm. I got so sick that I had homemaker services uh -huh. through Medicaid. They didn't uh -huh. take care of anything else, but they took care of the homemaking uh -huh. and they took care of um, social working. You had a rough go. And medication there. in New Jersey up until uh, and up until this coming January, uh -huh. medication as a person who's ill in New Jersey, at what's called CCPED. I pay zero dollars for my medication, uh -huh. and right now it's like two thousand dollars worth of medication a month for a person after a right, transplant. Right no, now, yeah, because yeah. All right, we want to talk about see, the the post-operative medication is important, and will that level off or will it? It does diminish level off. Right things? now, yeah. I'm taking yeah. Prograf, which you got to be one careful of rejection and that kind of stuff. Sure. Yeah, right sure. now, I take Prograf, five and a half milligrams, and I take Prednisone, Those five are, milligrams. I take that Prograf twice a day. I take the Prednisone, one pill in the morning. That's my medication. Have you taken them both this morning? Yes, as a good. matter of fact. Yes, good. Okay, good. That said, um, uh -huh. when it comes to doing the uh, the work, these doctors looked at the liver in Philadelphia. They drove to Philadelphia. Wait a one minute. Of the now, doctors. wait a minute. ahead a little bit. You're no, talking I'm not. About, okay. I'm talking about okay. my liver. I know. When I, I know. got sick enough that I needed a liver, they uh -huh. had gotten permission for me to have one, even though. My MELD score was 21. The federal government had to give permission. Uh -huh. They had an opportunity to look at a liver in Philadelphia, PA. Mm -hmm. They looked at it. The Philadelphia Institute, whatever organization, you know, hospital, we didn't want to use it. Mm -hmm. They felt it was compromised. The doctors from Mount Sinai said, this is a perfectly fine liver. They Who brought, thought it was compromised? I'm sorry? The doctors in Philadelphia. Did they ever the say person, why oh, they thought it was compromised? I think it was the uh, enzymes in the uh, liver, some of the... Um, All right. And the doctors, the doctors here, here looked at it, it and said it's perfectly fine, okay liver. Brought it over. Uh huh. You know, I think yeah. they put it on ice and put it into a little. Is that uh, what they do? They put it on ice. Sometimes they fly it quickly because it's. They drove uh, it. It took two hours, Philadelphia. Yeah, they drove up here with dry ice or something, a uh, uh, liver, and it was from, if I may, it was, it was you don't know exactly, 30 year old Caucasian woman, woman uh, in uh -huh. Philadelphia who had an untimely. Accident. accident of some type. Uh -huh. They thought the liver was fine. They brought it to New York. I got a phone call at a quarter to five or 5.15 in the morning, and they said that... What did um, the phone call say? They asked if I... Uh, Je is this Jeffrey Feller? Yes, uh -huh. uh, we have a liver. Would you like to come? I said, well, I was going to watch Ellen DeGeneres today. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. Uh, no, I'll be there, right? I guess, yeah. you know, I guess I could... 
Uh, because you had been waiting and hoping five years, and ten thinking. Months, yeah, right. And I was like, uh, yeah, I know. five years and ten I'm months here to is a long time. You, yes, yes six indeed. Months, it is. To have that Damoclean thing hanging over your face. I was your the thing, last person to know how sick I was. Uh -huh. In fact, if you yeah. like, I read you these poems. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you did that. And then you went in and you had the operation successfully about three months ago from now. We're talking June March 22 10th, now. March yeah. 10th, I had the operation. All right, uh huh. That you counted your new birthday. I got like about 9.30 in the morning or so, maybe even earlier than that. Uh huh. They put me on a gurney, they mm. set me up, yeah. and I didn't even remember anything except uh, they set me up. Uh -huh. I remember afterward, a woman, Janet, who worked over there, said, what are you doing back here? And I said, I'm getting my transplant, yeah. and I was smiling. Yeah, yeah, and you were all 100% for it. You weren't scared, you were ready for it and everything. I was like, hallelujah. And the operation was about 12 hours, did you say? 12-hour operation. Started at 10 at night, and then, uh, and 6 at night, and ended at 6 in the morning. And a pretty hard recuperation period, quite a bit. I spent two weeks in a day. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I got there March 10th. I left the evening of March 24th from the hospital to rehab. To a, to a convalescent thing, right? No, rehab, rehab right next door yeah, where right. I started to learn how to Is walk again. Is this all again. Mount Sinai? Yes. Just to give them a plug? Yeah, because they do that, right? Okay, yeah. They, uh, they treated you well? Everything was good? Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I was transferred over. I know that I was in like funky spirits the day that I was transplanted. You know, I mean, the day that I was getting ready to transfer. I had a friend of mine who was funny. He's a Met fan. Mm -hmm. And that you're day a I Yankee was, fan, if I'm not mistaken. Not only am I a Yankee yeah, fan, yeah. I'm a lucky person because yeah. I do some work as a volunteer. I um, help out as a runner uh -huh. for Louis Rakenna, who worked in uh, Yankee Stadium as a photographer since 1958. Recently yeah. retired. Great uh -huh. guy. Yeah. And I've been helping him with his equipment because. Um, you know, he has some trouble carrying all of his equipment. He's uh, 85 years old now. Yeah, but you are a big Yankee fan. You're sure. out in Yankee Stadium and all the time. And here's my friend who's a yeah. Mets fan whose sister was one of the first people in New York to get a transplant, so he was familiar with the whole thing. Yeah. He had to carry these flowers that the Yankees were nice enough to send me, saying, get well, your friends from the New York the Yankees. Yankees sent you a thing? Oh, they nice. They sent me flowers. I couldn't have oh, been more wonderful, happy. Wonderful. You talk about lifting up yeah. my spirits. Yeah, well, you lifted my spirits when you walked in my door the other day, brother. I really did. Now, listen, you're a poet, and out of this experience, which must have been sort of, it's a, it's a fantastic and experience like, to right? go through. You got a couple of poems out of it, didn't That's you? That's true. I've always and said, I've even in dark moments, whenever you're in a dark moment, you always make sure you get a poem out of it. You know? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, and so you, know, you got a couple of A good points. writer, I think, yeah. or a writer, sometimes we don't write because we want to. It's because mm. we need to. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's I've like heard you tell, got things yeah. happening. So you got you? a couple of poems, and so, so why you don't know, you read these? So, you know, my Met fan two? friend, he liked them, yeah. too. And yeah. Um, yeah. it was funny. He felt it was a plot. Here he is carrying Yankee flowers <laughs> to the rehab <laughs> from a Med fan. Did he yeah, bring a, a Med fan. Did he bring a hot dog and beer and peanuts? No? I'll tell you what, though. But I'll tell you, this is a poem. Yeah, this is a poem you did after the operation, No, as a matter of fact. Yeah, okay. My friend Maria, yeah. she went over to my house, took care of my house for me, yeah. got it all straight. While you are being operated on, you mean? During the time I was convalescing. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. She saw a book that had a poem about, uh, a political poem, yeah. which maybe I'll read, maybe I won't, but uh -huh. just the same. She saw a book, poetry, she brought it in. I'm looking through the book. I wrote about three poems. Uh -huh. All of a sudden, I look in the book, and there's this poem I didn't even remember writing. It. Oh, really? It's called, it Forget About It. Okay. Go ahead, read there's it There's an out. empty room in my mind. Adjacent is a room so full of despair that I close the door and I push up against it so. Uh -huh. I need to keep it there. I have a long climb before me, and how high up I do not know, but go I must through rivers of snow uh -huh. that push up against me. And the jawbone guy in the black cloak, he's staring at me. Uh -huh. His white bones ain't even dry yet. Uh -huh. And still he calls out to me. Hey, you want to join me in a game of checkers? And mm. I give him the middle finger. Mm. I tell him, stick mm. it, pal. Uh -huh. Any distraction from the action helps me to keep from the fact that I'm in psychic traction. Uh -huh. And I walk, I talk, I roll over, but I will not even play dead. Uh -huh. My stream of consciousness is as simple as this. One day you and I, all of us, we will stare at Mr. D. Uh -huh. I am staring at him right now. Uh -huh. He's staring at me. Uh -huh. He's flirting with me. I am flirting with him. I re I reject him as an undesirable suitor. And I say, you're going to have to come and get me, copper. My uh, name is Cagney. <laughs> My name was Edward G. Robinson. Yeah. I'm like Dylan Thomas. Yeah. I will not go softly uh, into that good night. Uh -huh. I've got a goddaughter uh -huh. to play godfather to. Uh -huh. A poetry reading to host on Sundays. Uh -huh. And pretty women to kiss every day. Amen, yeah. Uh -huh. Six months of baseball. Uh -huh. 
pretty women to kiss every day. Again. Hundreds of people uh -huh. to meet. Uh -huh. So not yet, Mr. D. Uh -huh. Not now, Mr. Nah. D. You want me to join your posse? Uh -huh. One, two, three. Forget about it. <laughs> That's great. What do you call it? Do you call that, uh, call you call that, that carpe diem or forget about it? Forget and, about it. And now. underneath That's a New York a, poem, all right. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. underneath it says, I wrote this poem before getting a liver transplant. Uh -huh. And I have no, and this is the gospel, you had no I have no recollection of writing it. How many of your poems do you have no recollection of writing, do you think? Just that one. Just that one? Well, I'm sure. That, that one you ought to put in gold or something. Well, I mean, oh. I'm sure there's probably a bunch uh, of poems that I might, after I read them, remember yeah, when yeah. I wrote them. But, you know, I... In fact, I just started going through my books now. So that you I'm call that one Forget About It. How do you spell that? How do you spell Forget About It? Forget About It. How uh, do you spell it? New York it? spelling. How do you do that New York Forget About It? F-U-G-E-T-T-A-B-O-U-T-I-T. -T -T -T. That's word. New York spelling, all forget right. Forget About, about, about it, baby. it, Yeah, all right. And you got another one. Read another. Sure. Here. Red Hot 21. At? Red Hot 21. The Hot List. I couldn't do too much. It was not me anymore, only I did not know it. Hmm. I was reduced to a meld score. Meld, held, weld, felt, swelt, melt, Mary Poppins, chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Hmm. Hot 21 was not like Hot 95 FM. Hmm. I was dying fast. Hmm. Like Ricky Henderson fast. Like Maury Wills fast. Like OJ in his Bronco hmm. fast. <laughs> I was Bob Dylan's It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. Mm -hmm. Almost. Then a phone call came. It was the only thing that came in my apartment for a while. Hmm. Phone call, 5.15 a.m. Hello, Mr. Mr. Feller, Jeffrey Feller? Huh? Yes, this is he. Skip to the chase. Hmm. 40 minutes and a $61 cab ride later, I entered Mount Sinai Hospital en route to a liver transplant and a new life. I'd have been cold beef without my surgeon connecting me to a liver that had lost its original owner. Hmm. We merged a miracle gift of Red Hot 21. Ah, man, brother, a miracle. It's a miracle, this donor donation thing that we can do it. I don't know. How long have they been able to do that, the surgeons and so well, let's forth? Let's see, I think. I mean, when did they first transplant an organ successfully? Yeah, are you familiar I from your. I have some uh, history yeah. of it. I, I mean, does it go back a long that, time? Yeah, it's about over 20 years well, now. Well, 20 years is not. I was thinking 100 years because they couldn't do it 100 years ago or 200 years ago. They couldn't do, they didn't do any, you know. About you 20 know, years ago, I, okay. I, I seem to think it was Ohio where the first one was done, but Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh's famous for doing organs. Yeah. I think that was the first place where it was done a lot. And now it's and being it's done. And it's still considered the um, capital of liver transplantation in and the country. You're talking liver transplant, you got the kidney, all these other. But I'm just saying the whole, the whole, the whole, every place you turn and look in this modern world, there's miracles going on. If it's in physics, it's super strange. All the, everywhere there's revolutionary miracles, of not the least of which is in the arts of, medical arts of surgery, of being able to transplant livers and things like that. And it's all within the last 20, 30 years or something that all this stuff's going on, our knowledge base. We live at some sort of incredibly significant, important time, and we should give credit to this kind of thing. And we should support the institutions that are doing this life-saving work, these right. donor institutions, and we should more consciously think about and this putting ourselves in that position of donating these things to help people out. Right. It lends itself to the discussion about I think stem it, cell research. Oh, yeah, it, it does, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. And yeah. uh, it's really like I say, in New York, I guess it's about 20 years old, uh -huh. 18 years old. My friend... Uh, Good thing you weren't burned Bill, 20 years earlier. My friend Bill, who works over at Fountain House, yeah. where I used to work, he yeah. and Bill, uh, It'll come. his sister, yeah. his sister of got Bill. a yeah. transplant. Uh -huh. She was almost going to die. One of the physicians was told, well, you know, you should say goodbye because when you come back from your vacation, I don't think she'll be here. Uh -huh. She was maybe the fourth person in New York to get her transplant. Really? Was that She's a, now uh, one of the more successful people in the financial district and doing quite well. Uh -huh. So this, it's, it makes such a worldly difference. Yeah, I think I mean, you. you're seeing it from the inside, as it were, of somebody who's been on the other side of that, considering all those issues objectively or something like that, but somebody who's been through it and you faced the Mr. D and stuff like that. So you're here to testify and serve, and this is only three, year, three months ago. You're just coming right out of this experience. Phil, we really thank you for that and everything like that. Listen, poet, you got mm -hmm. another poem? Sure. Okay, read it. Poets don't supposed need, to read their poetry. Don't need a donor. I never met you, but I love you. 
Your signature on the back of your driver's license became my license to live. Uh -huh. Now I can pass go. Mm -hmm. Now I can collect $200, and now I can stumble on some finder's keeper's cash on the parking lot. Mm -hmm. I can't land on Park Place, and I can't dance on the boardwalk, but Baltic Avenue's mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I enjoy my simple life, the uh -huh. everyday joys of breathing, walking, talking, smelling, eating, sleeping, Thank you, cetera. and appreciate it. And appreciate it the way we all should appreciate it and don't take these things for granted, but just the beauty of a flower and all. There's so much beauty in just being alive and carpe diem, and it could go any time, and all of those things are eternal values exactly. that are you reified by your things, poetry. You know, yeah, yeah. Really, you know. Uh -huh. So I have a vibrant, loving life again. Uh huh. No, not again. It's sweet. Life's sweeter, tastier on the second go around. Oh, uh, really? Still, well, thank you. And still, there's a glitch. Mm -hmm. I'm here because you are not. Yeah. You and your family are heroes. Mm -hmm. Saying thank you seems so trite, yet thank you. Mm -hmm. I look up to my higher powers as I breeze on by. Good for you. That's beautiful, man. That's called man. donor to donor. Yeah. Are you still Are you still putting out some poetry these days? Are you putting sure. some out some reminiscent poetry and stuff like that? You, those are good. Those are all three really good. Mr. D, you didn't yeah. even know you wrote it, huh? Uh huh. Mr. D. And then, speaking of the donor, yeah. What we do yes. is I wrote a letter, and all of us are encouraged to write a letter to the donor family. Sure. So I wrote a basic letter describing my circumstance, who I am, mm -hmm. who I was before the transplant, and mm -hmm. you know before I got sick, mm -hmm. how sick I was. Mm -hmm. Described how I am doing, what I'm doing now. Uh huh. And certainly thanking them that in their time of despair and pain, mm -hmm. they had the wherewithal to see that someone else could uh, benefit from this sad and untimely event. Exactly. This is like a living will. This is something to be thought about beforehand, thought through ethically and so forth. Sure. And more people, I would suggest, to the degree we can, encourage more people to think that through and maybe get in touch with this donor Sure. Uh, donation process that there are these agents. We want to let them know where that can be done. Yeah. Sure, because there's like 1 800 gift for NY, gift for New York. Uh -huh. Is that for trail? One, that's um, organ and tissue donation. Uh -huh. For more information, it's 1 800 gift for New York. Uh -huh. And there'll be probably other numbers. There are other numbers that people can contact to assess how they can arrange we're gonna and learn more about it. It's right. Probably, yeah. And we're going to put up some contact information about these agencies at the end of this program. Because there's a, it's a big movement. It's growing, and it's one that would want to be encouraged, I think, by people. Some people won't be able to handle it uh, psychically or uh, psychologically or otherwise or something. But it's a really, mo it's a really modern miracle of science and so forth and believe that it should not, be encouraged all around, it seems to me, as an ethical not, proposition. This is something that I was surprised at. Uh -huh. A person 83 years old, 85 mm -hmm. years old, You'd think, okay, that person's uh, body is not going to be useful. Uh -huh. Believe it or not, an 85-year-old liver yeah. can do wonders in a 22-year-old man. Is that a true fact? It doesn't run down as a system? No. It doesn't. Let me ask you a question. You had hep C, right? You yes. had hepatitis C. That was an illness. Now, you, it, it messed up your liver. That's right. Or was it, you know. It that, took a long time. Let I me had finish. donated blood. Yeah, I know. Okay. But let me finish. The point being is now you've got a new liver. Is the hep C there still there? And yeah. is it going to mess up this liver? Is it going to take a while? You're going to have to get another one in a few years? What's the story on that? And this hepatitis C, there's no cure for? Right now. Or you know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. we should get some stem cell research going to get at those Wouldn't kind of things. Wouldn't that be? That would be I wonderful. I think that people that are standing in the way of that ought to be, uh, I think, uh, argued against and chastised in a certain sense. But, okay, I'm sorry. What no, about that? No, you're 100% right. I think that the stem cell research is really the what's going to make a big difference to a lot of people with many different illnesses and uh -huh. it's only a question of time before it took a long time just to get rid of racism which is still prevalent it's in this country still here but brother on this but planet but the ugliness yeah. of its head uh -huh. while it's not totally eradicated it's like a hydra it's, it's seven-headed hydra it's a seven-headed hydra yeah. however it's things are a little better than yeah, they were in I, the 60s I, I like to think that things are getting so better so eventually uh. eventually the ideas that are prehistoric yeah. get mowed down. Mm -hmm. So eventually the idea that we won't be able to do stem cell research, we'll it'll get eventually more. get mowed down and yeah. there'll be stem cell research and it'll give hope to a lot of people's lives. Yeah. It's um, 
This is just a time until we are unfortunately waited out, and hopefully I'll be around. Yeah, to but see in the, the meanwhile, change. there's a tran bridge over Trevor Waters, Garfinkel, or something. Right now, the, uh, the, is, is the donor research thing, uh, the donor of organs, and this kind of thing. It's a beautiful bridge over troubled waters kind of thing that can help other human beings in a way that ought to be encouraged. Is what I'm saying now oh, in this yeah. transition period. That's for sure. Now, and look, right you're now, a living testimony to the fact. Hi, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Yay. a shining Yankee fan that wouldn't be here were it not for this program, and we should take our hat off to all the people that are behind doing that sort of thing and encourage people to become aware of it and maybe participate. Sure. Yeah. So there's what do you got, some people. more? Well, there's Dr. Schiano, who's like a great doctor from Mount Sinai who helped me out a lot. And yeah. Dr. Schwartz and... Rodriguez, Calarasi, a lot of the people at Nine Center in Mount Sinai. Just and great there are these people work. all over the country. Now it's a national world thing going on and everything, and it's a thing that should be made note of. And we're oh happy yeah, to be able to do it in a small way. These people are heroes too who work yeah. in the field. Now, yeah. the only thing for the hepatitis C, mm -hmm. there is a chance that it will get back into my liver and. I will need either a second transplant or die. What's That's the a chance? Reality. They got, uh, they got uh, odds on knowing. that it's sort of thing? It's a turkey shoot. Uh -huh. Although I think 80% of the people who have hepatitis C mm -hmm. have a chance of it going back into the organ at some point. It's a, and it's whether a nasty or not, thing, yeah. Right, and whether or not it gets into the <coughs> organ to the point where the person will either need a second transplant or pass away, uh -huh. it's a turkey shoot. There's uh -huh. no way of knowing. When will you know? If I'll that's know the when case. it happens, when no, it happens. No, but, I mean, you don't get some precursor things that if such a level goes up in your blood, it means that it's going in that direction. It took a while for your other liver to be, to be once it, affected, once you know what I'm saying? Hepatitis C will stay in the blood. Once yeah. it's in the blood, uh -huh. the possibility of it starting to attack the liver is real. Once it attacks the liver, depending on how virulently it attacks the liver, uh -huh determines whether or not the person is going to die or need a second transplant or die waiting for that second transplant. Mm -hmm. That said, the only thing we have presently that doctors have that I know of, mm -hmm. there's two drugs that I know about. One is a thing called interferon and ribavirin, which is mm -hmm. it's called Pegasus in mm -hmm. the common. And typically that's given to a person who has the hep C in their liver already. Yeah. Uh -huh. For those who do not have it in their liver, uh -huh. but it's in their blood, uh -huh. they're followed closely. Now there's a study going on which will have interferon and ribavirin given to people all over the country. Yeah. In 20, I think it's 20 different centers yeah. that do transplant. Three months after transplant, there will be individuals who will receive interferon and ribavirin to see if it can lower the amount of hepatitis C in the blood. Mm -hmm. Typically, mm -hmm. it works like this. If a person has it in their liver, they'll mm -hmm. take interferon and ribavirin. Of the, let's say, 100 people, yeah. 50 people will get a positive result from it, but only 25 of those people will get a long-term positive effect. Okay. But 80 of those people, while taking these drugs, will have depression or flu-like symptoms or diarrhea, or nausea. Yeah, side effects. There'll be side effects, you uh, know, homicidal ideation, suicidal ideation, depression, all these wonderful things. I mean, yeah. it's really kind of like yeah. scary. On a scale of 1 to 10, you wouldn't choose to be participating in that. But However, you, yeah. they're doing this study because they're hoping to find that using this protocol mm -hmm. three months post-transplant uh -huh. will eradicate, get rid of the hepatitis C from the body Have altogether they, uh, uh, during an 11-month span of taking the drug. That'd be wonderful because it's a huge threat. And if that were the case, and they're in, the, they're in trial now or something, they're going to be in I, trial. If I, if I Wait, participate yeah. in this trial, which yeah. they've asked me if I want to, uh -huh. if I do and, I can, and if I can sustain the side effects, because I don't know what the side effects will be until I try it. Well, Not everybody gets the same side effects. Right. Some, right. Yeah, I mean, if you looked at your aspirin, you'd see side effects yeah, that might I know, make I know, you not want to take I know. it. Yeah, right, right, right. So yeah. I'm grappling with it, and if I decide to go on this study, hey, well, outside works, of Well, outside of the side effects, suicidal ideation and so forth, things homicide. like that. I mean, been there before, you know, been yeah. there, done that kind of thing and everything every once in a while and everything like that. What, what, is there a physiological side effect to where it could be? Uh, life-threatening or something like that, outside psychological or other kind. Are the side effects p fatal or potentially fatal outside of I some sort of irrational? Well, I don't recall reading anything that suggested it fa f uh, that it could be fatal. No. And how long is the trial? 
Try to be 11 months of okay. taking the meds. So you think you're going to do that maybe? You'd be like I, a so guinea far, pig and that kind of new thing or something? Like Mr. What's that magic bullet when they first came? Uh, the one that you used to be a blender or something No, else? not, no. They, I mean, because it's been a long history of developing medicines. New things have to be tried. New, Madame Curie and the people would make these, they, they have that magic bullet. I mean, antibiotics are wonder. They can do these things and everything like that. So it's a long trial process of uh, getting better, but it is getting better. And hepatitis C is a disease that should, if there's something can be developed that will treat it, that would be a wonderful thing, be able to get rid of this monster that is such a trial for so many people. You said it's almost as difficult as, uh, or, or, or prevalent and problem uh, as, as AIDS, HIV. I think it's, uh, yeah, in monster. terms of people um, getting it and it being a, um, how do you call it? Um, I don't know, transmission? Not, you no, know no, 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 not trans I mean that's wrong, like I know. Uh, a it's prevalent. Prevalent, it's prevalent, right, prevalent. If yeah. HIV is prevalent in this country, mm -hmm at rapid numbers yeah. increasing, uh -huh. then hep C is, I think, second in terms really? of it's rapidly increasing the infection of people in the country. So then there's a place to really put attention in terms of our intellectual capability and our capability, technological and otherwise, is to address some of these ancient scourges and diseases rather than the putting in so much of it into making bombs and whatnot for killing each other. We ought to put it into the living research and that sure. kind of thing. And so the only what other drug I know that can possibly, you're, a, you're so right, Dr. Mm -hmm. Harold Chan. Well, friend. I mean, it just seems, you know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the only other drug is, uh, I read, uh, so a friend of mine gave me a thing about a study of a drug known as BILN2061, and it blocks an enzyme that is needed by the virus for replication. Eight people infected with hepatitis C virus took four doses of the drug over 48 hours. Two days later, virus levels had dropped by 100 to 1,000 fold. Hmm. No side effects afforded were reported. Longer trials are needed to assess how the antiviral activity holds up over time and whether the drug resistance will become an issue. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, this was a paper that will, this was based on a papers that have uh, released discussing papers that would be published in October of 2003. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'd like to know more about this. and I'm You look I, I to me like you've been to, doing some research, to, young man. Do more research. You've been bit. doing some research on this thing that had such a positive, I mean, such a, a personal effect upon you and so forth that I don't wonder that you do, but you're also starting to write some more poems. You're getting stronger. You had a period of a month or so, a difficult time, and it got, how are you feeling? I how feel you feel? fantastic. You're feeling better? You got a good fantastic. appetite? I you're feel feeling blessed. good? Everything's coming back? Did you feel kind of under the weather, as they say, for a month or two or something? Or what was it like, the recuperation from this? It's not a simple thing. 12-hour operation is a long time, and it's a major, you know, invasion of the, of the body cavity and all that. So... How are you feeling? How was it? What do you say to others who might be facing it or something like that? You've got to be prepared. Well, there's no way of being prepared, but... Be prepared. That's the Boy Scouts marching song for transplant as through life you march along. Go ahead. Well, I'll tell you, you know, after the transplant, I was in a room with four beds in it. Yeah. And the... That's uh, not the beginning of a poem, a room uh, with four beds. I'll tell you something yeah. even uh. more funny, though. Yeah. Here I am, I'm in this room, there are yeah. four people and a nurse that's 24-7 in the room, yeah. you know, intensively being watched. Yeah. Cross from me, mm -hmm. I used to live in New Paltz, New York, that's in my heart, Great my hometown. Town. Great town, yeah. In my heart, that's home, yeah. New Paltz. Yeah. Crossed away was a person I went to graduated college for, with. Uh, no kidding, really? He was a Wait a poet. minute, is this an actual thing or is this a dream? This or is true. No, it's true, it happened. This is okay, a poet I was just wondering. Who no. I wouldn't, you know, yeah. uh, but someone who we know. I know? Yeah, you know. You want to tell me or don't? Uh, 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 after uh, the tape, huh? Okay. Suit yourself. This gentleman was yeah. like a poem. He would be more of the typical, you know, poet, the classical oh. poet. Uh -huh. He's on that side. Mm -hmm. He graduated in 84. Mm -hmm. I'm on the other side, Mr. Bebop, or whatever yeah. you want to call me. I. You know, a different type of poetry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. He's waiting nine years, and I had met him once in clinic. Yeah. We're like, hey, how you doing? Meet your friends at the Hep C clinic. I've huh? met four <laughs> people there that I knew from back yeah. then, back in the day. Yeah, I met it's, four it's people. around a lot now. Yeah, I know, yeah. Oh, cool, cool, shoot. I'm sorry, I didn't mean and to here, No, hey. Mm. Meanwhile, I, I run into my friend. Yeah. He's getting ready. He just had his transplant after waiting nine years. Uh -huh. They're getting ready to wheel him out to go upstate for rehab. Yeah. I've just been wheeled in. Uh-huh. 
And I just got mine after waiting almost six years, both uh -huh. poets. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I also had a nurse. Uh, my name is Jeffrey. I was born January 31st. Yeah. Not, you know, well, yeah. 54. I'm an old guy. Uh -huh. And uh, there was another guy named Jeffrey who was a nurse. He got uh, his birthday. He was my nurse. He was January 31st, too. What's the chance of having people with the same first name and the same birthday? That was yeah. a goof. Yeah. You like that, right? That I was thought a, that was a goof. You that know? was a goof, you know. You get a poem out of it or not. You I didn't get a poem out of it, That was a poem. You just read a poem. Yeah. You know, and, uh, so the poetry's flowing well and everything? Been sure. out to a Yankee game yet? Yeah, I've been to a few. You've been to a few Yankee games since the operation. Oh, when yeah. did you go to the first Yankee first game? First Yankee game, I was still staying at the um, rehab? Transitional Living Center. After rehab, I went to a place called Transitional Transition, Living Center. Transitional, like a convalescent thing? You're it still was a place where people who are like traveling, like my mother, when she came from Florida, she yeah. stayed there. Yeah. I stayed there for a few days after because traveling from Weehawken to, to uh, New York. Yeah. It's going to be a challenge. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So until I could get my strength, I stayed there for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, having stayed there, I was getting my strength back. You were getting stronger every day. Right. Okay, good. Eating and better. And eating better. Yeah. And then uh, you were asking me about uh, the transition period. It took a while to get to the point where I could... Uh, Think you about turn going. myself back into the full realm of you yeah, know, to, doing to, things. Yeah, to venture out into the world. On and I thing. went to a ball game while I was staying there. Oh, uh, you went to a ball game? And while they, I was they, I was they who were monitoring you said that that's okay for you to do that. Well, they didn't say it wasn't, but they were surprised that I had that much energy that quick. Most well, people, I'm told, uh -huh. after three months, don't look as well as I do. Uh huh. You look great. You I look just absolutely too. I feel great. Terrific. Yeah, I feel and, and, and have you been feeling this? You're feeling better today than you did yesterday, so and the trend is good. And, and in fact, I'm, my plans are now. I have to do things like I just joined the gym in Hoboken. Uh huh. So I want to be working out regular, especially mm. if I'm going to go on. You're going to do all that exercise that you hadn't been doing right and everything. You're going to turn over a whole new leaf and you're going to lead this life really good because you appreciate it all all the more better having had a challenge and so forth like that. You think this is a lesson for all of us to learn carpe diem? You, what do you think? I think so, don't you? Well, I and think I think you ought to be able to get a few poems out of it, a few more poems. I'll and, tell you what. Yeah, listen, tell you one of the pro well, you're not going to get much more because you know what happens in time. There's only so much time. And you know what, Jeffrey? We've run out of time. All right, but so, I'll tell you this much. Yeah. In, um, before we go, All right, Tuesday, it. August 9th, 2005, time. is a save this date. Hepatitis C March to City Hall. Lola is sponsoring it, mm -hmm. and it'll be Battery Park to City Hall, 930 on that day. What's the date again? It is, again. Hurry up. August I shake 9th, your hand. Tuesday. Shake your hand, Lazarus. A welcome pleasure. welcome to and the world of the living, to, and I'm so uh, happy I'm for the surgery. You might You might be an actor. We didn't get a chance to get that in. There's all kind. You've got a big, beautiful life ahead of you. I, I'm just really happy to know that we've been able to share this with you, and maybe we'll put some contact information up for the institute. You're going to be September, learning. You're going to, be, going to go you're, become an actor. Yeah, and and it's really good. You may you become an Academy Award winner. I just hope that people will, like, Consider signing the donor card. Absolutely, so I would think so too. We all ought to consider that. There ought to be and discussions if you like poetry, of it. Poetry, come to the New York Poetry. Absolutely, thing. New York Poetry thing is really great. And, and we again, put some contact information up for this donor thing. And thanks, Jeff, for coming and sharing. It's really and an inspirational nice story. At Sinai, I'm really glad that they helped save my life. Yeah, thank them again. Look in the I camera see. and thank them. No, here, look in this, look in that camera and thank them very much for what they went on. And let this be a lesson to us all that we should all get involved with the donor pr see, process, thanks. become aware of it, join the ethical issues, and uh, let's help progress in terms of helping things. And congratulations. And Trio, Lorraine De Pasquale and Phil Moreno, nice, great people who helped me. Without their help, I don't know, it would have been horrible. Jeff Lazarus Feller. We thank you very much for participating in this program. It's been a privilege and a pleasure, Dr. Harold Hudson Tanner. <laughs> it's been a great pleasure seeing you, as always. I'm so happy. You don't know. You've made me very happy by walking in my door with all that good information. I'm really, really happy. So thank you for you, and we'll be coming back again tomorrow. Once again, Jeff, thanks a lot. It's so good to see you. And